Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Well, we're all in a Christmas mood right now, aren't we? So I thought, well, I need to do something else that's Christmassy. And um, I want to try to not quite do everything. Well, you know, what can you do? It's got to have a certain theme and therefore there's no way. There's no way out. So Father Christmas, here we come. Um, what I'm going to do first of all in this painting is uh, I'm going to wet this piece of stretched arches. Thank you, Denise. Um, I'm going to wet this all over. And um, then I'm going to lay in a variegated wash, a variegated graduated wash. Yes, that's right. Um, so I'll just let that soak for a second. I'm just using my uh, Ron Ranson Hake there for that. And um, the colours I'm going to be using for this background are I'm going to be using these um, Daniel Smith um, Primatech colours. I'm starting to learn these words. And I'm going to be using Mayan blue and amethyst. And uh, I've put some water on there to start softening it up a bit. And um, what I'm going to basically do is mix those two colours together roughly. And that's what makes it kind of variegated. And then I'm just going to drop the colour in really strongly around the edges. And I don't want it too green and that's why I've added the amethyst. But I thought it would be interesting to see how the, uh, because these are called these Primatech colours, they're supposed to be granulating. And there's, there it goes. That was the cat. Time's in. That was the cat. Um, it's all right, we've let Arthur out for the first time today. And um, Time's in is like a new mother. She's very anxious about her child going to nursery school for the first time. <coughs> so anyway, he is fine. Um, Primatech colours, granulating, hopefully. So I'm dropping this in quite strongly and mixing the two together on the paper. I'm not mixing, I don't believe in mixing colours ahead of time on in palettes, really, because you don't get the same effect. Um, so I'm just ladling this on. What's the word they use? Not ladling, but slathering, yes. It's one of those words that you recognise when you see it written, but you never know quite how to pronounce it. There's quite a lot of words like that. Anyway, so the darkest part is going to be in the corners. We're going to slather on lots of paint there. And uh, you do know I'm making this up as I go along, don't you? You know that I haven't done this before, don't you? No practising. No practising. So. The idea is it's going to be light in the middle, gradually um, darkening as it goes out. Now there's lots of different ways you can do this. You can add more water like I am here. Um, or you can do various other things. But uh, so I'm going to do it like that. I need to bring it down here a little bit more. And at the bottom, I'm going to put some houses and some Christmas trees down the bottom and Father Christmas is going to be there. Now, uh, as I was saying, there's lots of different ways you could do this. And one way is to add plenty of water in the middle, <coughs> excuse me, and then kind of um, sweep it out a little bit. Do that, that works quite well. That will give you a kind of light area in the middle. And, but then I want to add some um, texture. So I think I might add a bit of salt. I don't think that this Primatech paint is going to do very much very exciting. So we'll make it more exciting by doing a little bit of texturizing. Just a little bit of salt into the wet paint 
to give it a bit of character. And then um, to lighten it up in certain places, we've got uh, this is Winsor & Newton white ink. Um, you could use white gouache. Um, Winsor & Newton white, white gouache is quite good. Or you could use um, Dr. P.H. Martin's permanent, no, what is it called? Bleed proof white. You could do that too. Anything really. If you haven't got anything else, you've probably got Chinese white in your set of white paints. Sorry, in your set of paints, if you've got a tin of paints. The only problem with that is it tends to be uh, not particularly opaque. It's not meant to be all that white, but it would probably be better than nothing. So I'm trying to vary the size of these stars. And we all know, don't we, that galaxies are, the heavens are full of stars, especially now we have all those satellites. And you look up in the sky and you have to ask yourself the question, is that a star I see before me? Is that the star of Bethlehem? Or is that just the Telstar satellite that's producing my television picture? Which takes the romance out of the sky, in my opinion. There we are. So lots and lots of stars or satellites. And uh, I think that'll probably do. And we'll let that dry. When it is dry, I'll put some, uh, probably put some silver spatter on there, but I wanted the white to really just kind of break the whole thing up into a sort of, um, oh, I don't know, a kind of ethereal sort of look. And I've traced out the picture that I'm going to put on top, which is this. So we're gonna have a little Father Christmas with his sleigh and his reindeer, <coughs> or some of them, and some houses and some trees down the bottom. So that would be step number two. And uh, right now I'm going to turn you off, let you dry, and I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail, or indeed a reindeer's tail. See you in a minute. Before we get going again, I thought I'd just show you, can't show you very well, but I'll show you the edge of um, one of the mugs that we've got uh, for sale. This has got uh, red bush tea in it, and that's what I normally try to drink to avoid too much caffeine, which doesn't do me very much good. Um, so, yeah, we have these uh, printed for us and they're available for you. So go to dianeanton.com and have a look. You can see them better there. There are two or three. In fact, I think there's four. And we've also got them here on, um, on uh, YouTube if you go to our shop. If you go to the channel, uh, our channel uh, homepage, I like to call it, and there you'll see a link to shop and uh, we've got a few things there for you if you're interested. Um, okay, so this has dried and this is looking quite nice. I think that's a lovely textured surface. I hope you agree. And um, so what I'm going to do, because now what I need to do is to, I've done this tracing of Father Christmas and his sledge and I'm not going to put the moon there. I've changed my mind about that. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to put the moon up here, I think. Um, and then we're going to have some pine trees and some cottages, houses, some nice sort of, uh, I don't know, um, whimsical, if you like, whimsical houses down the bottom there. So I want to trace this because I want to make sure I get it in the right place. So I'm going to cut this now off of the board and that's okay because I stretched the paper onto the board in order that it wouldn't buckle when I did the wet in wet part, which is now finished. And uh, so the next stage is going to be very much um, painting in a drier fashion. So we won't have to worry about buckling. And in any case, because it's got this supportive strip of paper around the outside, so I'm cutting well into the brown paper. Um, so that if you wanted to frame it, you wouldn't need to lose any of the picture. So you might just have to go around that again to loosen it. Come on guys, let go.
There we are. Get all of that. And that's our background now. And you can do this with so many different um, designs. And then what I need now is my light box. And a few people have asked about this, where it comes from and everything. I got mine from Amazon in Amazon.com in the US because I couldn't get one from here. It's amazing what Amazon.fr doesn't have. Um, so we'll turn that on. It's um, Light Energy is the name of it. It's Amazon's choice. So we'll pop that in there. And then we can position the painting wherever we want. So that's fun, isn't it? So what you can do, somebody suggested this and it's a good idea. If you want, you can put a little bit of tape to hold the tracing in place. I'm just using a bit of washi tape. And then this will move around without the one underneath moving, moving with it. So we want the houses at the bottom there, but the point is you can, you can trace this and then if you want to trace the houses, you can move it to where you want them. So I think I'll put that, I think I'll put them about there. And I'm going to trace them with a pen, the Stettler liner, um, because I'm going to paint them in black anyway. So it's just easier. So I just want the outline there. And then the trickiest bit is the reindeer. It's definitely useful to have the thing to trace with. And if you want, you can download the tracing from vananton.com online on my website that is to say It's a surprising amount of concentration, I'm trying to stop them looking like dogs. Failing a little bit there, but never mind. Uh, Rudolph the red-nosed dog deer. Okay, so having done that, I'm then going to drive you even crazier by filling it in with black. And I'm using a black uh, brush pen here, simply because it's easier. You could use any kind of marker pen. 
And he's obviously in silhouette because he's in the sky. And uh, this is one of those things that's kind of relaxing and meditative, so. Let's hope Tamsin's playing some nice music in the background. Donna and Blitzen and Rudolph and Dasha and Dancer and I remember um, when we were living in Canada one oh we had a hard time living in Canada trying to make a living and um, one year we decided to have a a cart. You know those carts that they have in the mall at Christmas time? People come in with stuff, special stuff for Christmas and everything, and suddenly you feel like you're in a market place, and that's nice. Anyway, so this one time, this is years ago now, we decided to have a cart, and we were selling gifts there. That was me and my husband and the kids. And uh, one thing we hadn't anticipated when we did this was that if you're exposed to non-stop Christmas songs every day for two months, you stand a very good possibility of going crazy and never being able to hear a Christmas carol again without cringing. You know, I used to love those things like, uh, what's that one? The bells. Something about bells. Anyway, it was a long time after that before I could listen to those songs anymore. Anyway, memories. Not necessarily good ones. I remember the day after we finished when we shut down for the last time and I went home and I collapsed and I lost my voice. <laughs> I'd done so much talking for a month, six weeks, however long it was, it was a long time. And I just couldn't speak for ages, about a whole week, I think it was. It was quite nice. I had to actually use sign language. Right then, so that's that done. And now we will draw the, um, the houses. So I'll move that a little bit and like that. So now we need a pencil and I'm just going to roughly draw these in. You can let your imagination run riot here and do whatever you feel like. You could put little people coming up the path. You could put animals. Just whatever takes your fancy. Do them kind of rounded because that way they seem a little bit more elf like or gnome like or something. Makes me think of those gingerbread houses. A lovely idea of Christmas from Germany, I think. 
They probably do Christmas better than anyone else. Their Christmas markets and their Christmas biscuits, Lebkuchen, Spekulatius, all that stuff. Wonderful. I remember going out on Lake Constance one Christmas doing a special trip when I worked in the uh, school for, or the residential home for disabled people in Überlingen, near Überlingen. And I had to take this group of disabled people out on the boat. And one came from Germany, one from Switzerland, and one from Austria. And they all came out on this special Christmas trip and all met in the middle of Lake Constance and said Happy Christmas to each other across the national boundaries. It was rather lovely. Right then. That's that, so we'll turn that off and put that away for the minute. And what have we got here? Okay, so now I need my watercolours. But we won't need very much, will we? Because um, I'm going to do this in shades of blue, probably. Um, so let's find a pen, a brush. And um, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. For my little dishes, I must admit. So I'll do it that way. I think what colour is this? This looks like it's had a, seen better days, hasn't it? I think that's quinacridone gold under there. We have Caribbean blue, I think this is. That's the same as phthalo blue. Um, this is uh, ultramarine. This is French ultramarine. We don't need both of those. That's um, Windsor violet. This is olive green. Um, and I think that'll do. I might not need that. Um, I might need. Phthalo blue. Right then, so, and then we need a little dish to do the mixing in. Okay, so, uh, going to paint the going to paint the houses in blue. Actually, that's a good point. I will paint the houses in blue, but first what I need to do is paint the, um, the lights behind the windows, in the windows. So we put some yellow in here. So here we go with the blue. Try not to let that run too much into the yellow. I 
You could do this with br um, brush pens if you wanted to. I did ponder that. I thought to myself, I could do that with brush pens or even a water brush. Could do that. But I decided not to. We could have a little bit of um, smoke, couldn't we? Coming out of the chimney if we wanted to. And then um, I was thinking I would do the, the trees in a kind of, I don't know, a sort of loose way not in any way attempting. I'm just making this up as I'm going along. Not attempting realism at all. A bit more yellow near the top. Just let it, I don't know what it's going to do. I'm working on Arches paper. And I'm basically mixing uh, phthalo blue with Windsor Violet to get these bluey. You know how when it's dark, green doesn't really look green, does it? I'm going to paint over that. Another blue house. Just a little bit of pale blue in the roof to indicate the snow. Chimney. This house also blue on the blue side, anyway. I 
When you get to this point in a painting, you never really know how it's going to turn out. And you're sort of trying out different things and different colours and, and you're thinking to yourself, if this kind of goes wrong, what am I going to do to correct it? And when you say to yourself, Is it, and it goes wrong, what do I exactly mean by that? What does it mean for it to go wrong? What did I expect? A bit like life, really. Right. I think this one wants to be bluer. I don't think it might be quite hard to make that any darker. Okay, so now we need to let that dry and we'll come back and put the snow on. So I've had a little bit of a rethink about the moon and I've decided I've, I'm going to put the moon in here. It was uh, a bit of an option to put it in the sky, but it looks now as if it's going to go there. So I've just taken a, a little cup and uh, tried that out to see and I'm going to do it sort of extravagantly huge and then uh, I'm going to take the starry colors here by Kuretake and uh, let's go for the white gold and we'll just paint in um, a sort of shiny moon type of thing around the legs of the uh, reindeer a little bit and it's a uh, when it's dry, I'll rub out the pencil line, but I need that to guide me. So we're just, as I said before, I'm making this up as I go along, so bear with me. And I'm probably then, I think, going to give it a little bit more, um, what's the word, variation. Make it stand out a little bit. We'll add some of the gold. That's light gold. And you could, I think maybe yeah, that one, so it shows a little bit more. That's champagne gold. Just put that there. That's better. Make it look a little bit more like the moon with some craters and things. And let that dry. And I suppose while we're at it with the silver and gold, we might as well pop in some some whoops, some stars. Because I said I would do that because I like to do that. It's fun. And um, yeah, so let's decorate these trees in a simple, stylized way. Pretend they're Christmas trees like you have at home. Make them pretty.
Just any kind of pattern really. Super idea for painting with children. I wish we'd have had these wonderful silvers and golds when my children were small, we would have had a lot of fun. This one I didn't like what I've done on there at the beginning, so I think we might lighten up this one too. And then I think I'm going to take the black pen, I've already done this one, and I'm going to outline the roof. And the chimney pot and the window. And this one. And I'm going to let it dry. So there's the final painting. Thanks so much for watching with me today and I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please don't forget to click subscribe and turn notifications on so you hear whenever something else goes up. And uh, give us a like and maybe leave a comment in the box below. I always try to reply to all the comments. And I'd like to thank you all as well for your support over the last year as we've been growing the channel. And we are just about to reach one year anniversary and we're very close to 20,000 subscribers as well. So that's absolutely fantastic. And thank you, all of you, for being wonderful, loyal uh, viewers of the channel. Um, please pop over to dianeanton.com where you get free downloads of the sketches to do these paintings and lots of other cool stuff too. So I'll let you go now. Hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you again soon. So bye for now, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>